Welcome back. You're now watching the lifestyle segment brought to you by Holo Crunch Popcorn. Hello, Didi, and Happy New Year. Hi, Andy. Happy New Year. How was your holiday for those of you who had holidays? <laughs> it was good. It was good. Any Restful. resolution? None. Interesting. Yeah, none. We're just going with the flow with the year. You know, well, I, I think since 2020, people have just decided let's just survive till the next day That's and it. the next year. <laughs> and do your best. What um, is your outlook? Do you think it's positive? Do you think we should be um, saving or we should be careful this year? What's the energy like for you for this year? Just make do money. your best. <laughs> make money, exactly, and enjoy yourself. Because things in, with inflation, I'm just like, if you want something, get it now. Forget about all that <laughs> delayed gratification. I, I, I agree as with the fact that every day that passes will never come back, every hour. And so we spend so much time wanting to wait for later, like mm -hmm. you said, delayed gratification, and then sometimes it may never come. Exactly. Also, for young people, we need to constantly check our blood pressure and sugar tests and the likes. We see a lot Absolutely. of young people dropping dead mm -hmm. these days, and I think it's troublesome. We should have that conversation maybe in the next couple we of should. weeks. Yeah. yeah. Good. So talking about lifestyle mm -hmm. and f talking about food choices and the likes, a big lifestyle issue for young people right now is Jackpot culture. To Jackpot or not to Jackpot? <sighs> yeah. I have been privileged to be out of the country for a while, but I came back because I love Nigeria. Mm. But sometimes you see when things are not working and how hard it is with the economy, and you just wonder, maybe I should just go away. You see people leave their bank jobs, and then they go abroad and they're doing cleaning roles and doing the most minute roles. Anyways, that's the conversation we'll be having on Lifestyle, and we'll be having this conversation with a good friend of mine who is a PR strategist, a communications expert, and a young person who understands how this system works. I would like to hear his thoughts on to Jackpot or not to Jackpot, um, the pros and cons. And joining us in the studio, we have... We have Dikpo Smart. Good morning and welcome to the show. Hi, Didi. Hi, Andy. Good morning. Hi, Dikpo. Good to see you on air. <laughs> it's good to be here. <laughs> yeah, world traveler. And please, Dikpo doesn't have government money, so leave him alone. <laughs> but um, one thing I know and like about you is your quest for knowledge. Mm -hmm. As long as I've known you, you've always been in one school or the other, literally <laughs> from diploma to degree yes. to master's. Yes. But you always find a way to come back. Why? Well, um, there's, there's no place like home. Like, it's, it's not an adage. Like, it's, it's a real thing. There's no place like home. And since September 2022, <clears throat> I've lived in the Republic of Ireland. And the Republic of Ireland, interestingly, has the most out... The, 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 is the country with the highest number of indigens outside the country than itself. And that's funny because the Republic of Ireland has a population of about 5 million people, but more than 34 million people worldwide um, are recognized as Irish people, mostly in America and Argentina, I think. Which is weird because I know Ireland is one of the richest countries in the world. I saw yes. an <laughs> index with um, how much people make, and for them it's about 140,000 um, per annum, where some other countries are as well as 45. And so yeah. if they have the good, the money, why are people out of there? Well, so the, the, one, the first thing that you, you learn when you live with people from other nationalities is that nobody is happy with their country. Mm. So, like, not even with the perfect countries, like, not even with the places that we look at as the Western world. I, like, from personal experience, I had, I know three of my Irish classmates from a master's program. One has left already, two are going to be leaving this year. I mean, like, I moved there and they're also moving out. So, like, I can tell you for a fact that nobody is, quote unquote, like, satisfied where they are. So, what is greener pasture for some people is browner for some people. <laughs> like, there's, there's no one satisfied where they are. That's, that's the long and short of it. Okay. So, are there any potential benefits of staying in Nigeria for those who choose to stay? Because um, during your intro, Andy, you mentioned um, loving Nigeria, which is why you came back. That was another reason why I also came back because I was like, huh, I could see you know, the growth or, you know, quote unquote, we always say what's good when we're not there. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I could see it and despite my parents saying, no, just stay, work, I came back. Mm -hmm. And I've been back for a while now. So are there, I've not seen any potential benefits <laughs> since I came back, but are there any potential benefits for those who, you know, decide to stay? Decide to stay, yeah. well, if it's decide to stay, I was talking to someone yesterday 
and he talked about how, like, I'm going to be very specific now. I was making more money when I left Nigeria than I'm making now. Mm -hmm. And I'm factoring in our, the exorbitant ex exchange rates, even when you change one million and get like just 600 and like something pounds Ouch. or 700 and something euros. Like, I was making more money when I was living in Nigeria and working in Nigeria than now, because in Nigeria, I owned businesses. That's pro, I'm not one business. Right now, I'm, I'm working, I'm just doing this, doing that, you know, I just finished from school, looking for a full-time job and all. So are there more benefits? Maybe for me, and like for most Nigerians, you can pursue more of an entrepreneurial spirit in your country or in Nigeria. Most European countries do not have that advantage. The, the only Western country you find that advantage massively in is the United States of America, to be specific. Most Canada, most European countries do not have entrepreneurial like room, like that, like that for um, migrants. Interestingly, you know one of the reasons why I love Nigeria, and you know this, our food. <laughs> Nigerian food is unrivaled <laughs> anywhere in the world, and no matter what it is, like, I saw someone in Canada do a post and say, oh, plate of, a bowl of Egusi, $80, bowl of this, $120, and of course my calculator was out, 80000 naira for a bowl of Egusi that will pay maximum. <laughs> a bowl of $80,000 is now more than $80,000. Yeah. And, 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 exactly, and even for that one, it was a discounted rate. Um, but you also have the reputational issue where you now have some Nigerians leaving the country and going abroad and creating a bad reputation for Nigeria. We've seen cultism go across the show. We've seen drug usage. We've seen some criminalities. What do you have to say about that? Actually, I have two things to say about that, and I hope I have the time to break this down here. Like, I think there's something called media attention and media literacy. Increased media literacy is the reason why we think some problems are new. I don't think these problems are new, but I think now everything is on social media. So that means that if Nigerians went to fight at a tower in Dubai 20 years ago, you, you won't know till like the next week. But now if it happens, it's live on Twitter in five minutes. So I think there's that. And I mentioned the Dubai incidents because like that's a big deal because we can't even go to Dubai now. Yeah. Th that's one. Then two, um, there's nothing and I say this from personal experience, there's nothing that we do outside Nigeria that other nationalities don't do or do worse of. I think Nigerians are a bit too critical and harsh on ourselves, especially when it comes to how we present ourselves. You know, as Nigerians, when you're at home, they, your parents always tell you that, remember the child of who you are, like, don't disgrace us. So on a national level, we always feel bad when we see those people that disgrace us. So I, I'm happy that we do try to hold people to account. But to be very honest, I think we are too harsh on ourselves in that regard, and I'm speaking from personal experience. So what are the challenges people might face when relocating? Um, for one, the weather. Um, thankfully, like, I, I traveled just before the weather got, like, more harsh. Like, it was 9, 11 degrees on Christmas Day in, in Dublin last month, and, like, my Irish friends said that that's the record warmest Christmas they've had in years. In 9 degree weather, I'm wearing, like, three or four layers of clothing, but, like, Irish people are like, this is, like, pre-summer for them. So the weather is probably the first thing that you really, really face. And when I talked about no place like home initially, you're talking about some form of racial discrimination. I received a job offer some weeks ago, and I got called that the job offer was rescinded because they wanted to go with people that had more Irish experience. To be specific, they wanted Irish people. To be specific. So I, I think these personal experiences are things that like, I won't have in Nigeria. Like, I don't think a Nigerian company will reject me for, you know, for what, someone that doesn't have more Nigerian experience, you know? So it's, but it's, the, it's the weather because I'm complaining about the cold in Ireland, but Canada is like, what we have in Ireland is like summer compared to what is, you know, the experience in Canada and so on. So I think the weather is, is the one that will hit you when you come out of the airport. <laughs> you know, I think it's almost inexhaustible to have this conversation. Um, but even when you spoke about the fact that most of these countries, they want their own people to have the jobs. There's a bit of this classism we have in Nigeria where those of us with foreign degrees, mm. in some job applications, mm. you will get priority over someone who went to I like, hope so. State I a lot of money for it. I'm sorry, <laughs> State University. And that brings me to my next question about paying a lot of money for it. And so for entrepreneurs right now, if you want to leave Nigeria yeah. for masters to relocate, you need a minimum of at least 20 million naira yes. in a year. Yes. With how much taxes and People are paying as high as 500, let's say, dollars to a thousand plus monthly, which yeah. is over a million at this yeah. point. Someone has 20 million and 
in Nigeria, would you advise the person to stay in Nigeria and start up a business or something with that 20 million naira, or would the, should the person pack up and go abroad? What makes more economical sense? Um, well, I think the thing that makes more economical sense for someone that thinks that they have a plan to spend, you know, this huge amount of money is to stay and, and build. But I think, like, what, like, there are different things that work for different people. Like, schooling outside the country that you've always lived in. I've, I've been traveling since I was a child, but this is my first experience living outside it's Nigeria. Yeah. So living with different people is always something that will help. So, like, that is why even people in Western countries also leave their own country and go to other Western countries. Because you, like, the, the cocktail or mix of experiences, shared experiences you get from being in a classroom or working with people that are from different nationalities, like, you, you, can't, you can't put a price to it. Even if, like, you think that is worth it and you can afford it, like, that helps because, like, the experiences I've had, the shared experiences I've had between September 2022 and now, like, I don't think I can put a price on it. In terms of quality of life, um, which would you prefer? I, to be honest, I, I think that's a no-brainer. And I, I, I think you're asking that question as a as sarcastic <laughs> one. I'm just going to go ahead and say that, like, okay. it's unbeatable. Like, let us even take away the fact that, like, maybe the weather here is harsh and it's sunny. Like, it's unbeatable. I lived with, I lived with an Irish lady all through the course of my master's program, and there was a day there was a power blackout in one part of town. It wasn't. I was in school. It, the power blackout was not in our house, and it wasn't in my school. But she called me and was panicking. So like that just gives you an example of my point is that if the power goes out in this place, everybody will sit down till it comes back on. That just gives you an example of you know cost of living. One more thing. There are less than 500, there are, Ireland has a population of about 500, 5 million people. There are less than 300, there are about 300 to 500,000 homeless people on the streets. And they are making noise about it every day. It's a national issue, national emergency. There are protests about it, the homelessness crisis. We have more people than that in our IDP camps, and nothing is done about it. So like I said, I think it's a rhetorical question, but I'm answering is that like, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> like, it's a no-brainer. Mm. Final question for you, being an entrepreneur, what sectors do you advise young people who have decided to stay? Because a lot of people don't have the option. The people live in Nigeria are up to 1%. What sectors, what entrepreneurial areas do you think are the hotspots for 2024? For 2024, um, I think, and this is probably, I have, I have a personal bias with this. I think for entrepreneurship, like you, if you know what you're doing, you always make money. Um, you always make money in nightlife and entertainment if you can, quote and unquote, like find your way up. And food will always sell. I've, I've, run, two I've run more restaurants, like we've worked on <laughs> more restaurants than we can imagine between June 2015 and now. And um, in the last two, three years, I've worked with more restaurants. Food will always sell anywhere in the world. And Nigeria is not an exception, no matter the price of things in the market, no matter what the inflation numbers are saying. So food, entertainment, like, you don't need a degree to do them. You can practice them as a vocation. You can do them because you are just good at it. And I'm sure there are tons of other options. Dipo, always nice having a conversation with you. <laughs> we would have had this conversation offline, but we might as well have <laughs> it pleasure. here. But in all that has been said by Dipo and Didi and myself, if we have a sustainable environment, somewhere where people can have businesses and make a profit, people will stay. If we have security, people will stay. If we have jobs for our young people, if our universities are not going on strike, people will stay. The reason why most people are leaving is because they don't feel safe and secure. And this is economically, physically, mentally, and in every other way. We love Nigeria. We want to stay in Nigeria. And the onus is on us to be good citizens, for the government to do its job and be accountable. And so thank you so much, Dipo, for joining us. Good to be here. It's on always the a pleasure to <laughs> have you. Dipo you. mentioned entertainment. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking about entertainment. Tri a tribe called Judah by Funka Kindele apparently has grossed over a billion naira. I'm sure there are different parts to that story. But we've had some great TV shows that have been made in Nigeria by Nigerians and it's now trending globally. One of which by one of my favorite people or persons, Dean Watia, who, and you will see him shortly. But let's take a quick break and when we return, we'll talk about how we can harness the entertainment sector to make money for our young people and for our country. See you shortly after this break.